So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to have John queue up a video to, to, to get ready to go here. The uh, American Anti-Corruption Act, it has a bunch of provisions in there um, that we're trying to put back into place uh, so we the people have more representation. Uh, so uh, we'll bring Nicole on in just a minute, um, but please take a moment and just uh, take, a, take, a, take a gander at this video. Hi, Vince here with LobbyWow. I'm gonna tell you how you can turn your tens of millions of dollars into literally billions. Here's how. The government hands out money all the time and rules favorably for big business every day. I bet you ask yourself, why am I such a stupid piece of crap? How do I get my hands on some of that sweet, sweet cash? Everything you tried doesn't work. You tried voting, but that never works. You try calling your senator, I bet you have, you useless piece of crap. What about bribing your congressman? What, do you wanna go to jail? Lobby Wild takes this useless bribe and turns it into a campaign contribution. There's literally nothing democratic about it. It works with drugs, it works with corn, it works with healthcare. So look at this great bowl of beef. What's wrong with it? Too expensive. You gotta sell 100% beef on the open market. Be way more profitable if you could cut it with some kind of cheap filler like you do your cocaine. But hey, that's illegal. All right, take a look at this. You getting this camera guy? Well, look at that, those regulations that come right off. GetLobbyWild.com. No more regulations means I can do whatever I want. Look it, you add your wood pulp, the ammonia, some of the pink slime. Have a little fun, I got some feces here, look at that. Mmm, profit. Sell those extra missiles to the army, even though they didn't ask for them in the first place. Look at this, that's usually a big mess. Not with LobbyWow, look at these chumps. They didn't go to GetLobbyWild.com. You get a great return on investment. It works on both parties. And if you go here right now, because I can't do this all day, you're gonna get a sweet briefcase full of hot cash. Lobby, wow. It's gonna have you saying, holy shit, I can't believe this is legal. <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't that great? I mean, you know, that doesn't say what's kind of going on. I don't know what does. Um, so we'll be bringing in uh, Nicole Laurent, um, and she's going to explain to you what kind of got her involved and what her main motivation is. And then we're going to go uh, through uh, kind of nationally what this means, but bringing it down truly to the local level um, and, and how we can enact change here today. Uh, welcome, Nicole. Please go ahead and um, introduce yourself, uh, what you do uh, in Vancouver uh, in that chapter and what got you motivated to start that chapter. Sure. So um, my name is Nicole Laurent. I'm the chapter head for the Vancouver, Washington chapter. And we uh, we work on passing local resolutions. Um, and these resolutions are based on something called the American Anti-Corruption Act. And the Anti-Corruption Act is this model resolution um, that was created by constitutional experts from people on both sides of the aisle. Um, and so it's a nice, solid uh, model resolution, and the focus of it is comprehensive anti-corruption reform. So above and beyond just simply trying to get uh, Citizens United reversed, which is not simple by any means, but that's just one piece of the puzzle. Um, this, the country really needs comprehensive anti-corruption reform, and there's several areas. Um, there's 14 provisions in the American Anti-Corruption Act that work towards that. Uh, we do have uh, some of these uh, written here. So one section is stopping, you know, the political bribery. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's making it illegal for politicians to take money from lobbyists, ban lobbyist bundling, um, and closing the revolving door um, on, you know, going from office to lobbying, correct? Correct. And then end secret money. Um, the immediately disclosed political money online stop donors from hiding behind secret money groups right. uh, and crack down on super PACs. Right. And another one is to fix our broken election systems, right? So, mm -hmm. so and gen gerrymandering, changing how elections are funded, uh, mm -hmm. let all voters participate in open primaries, and then let voters rank uh, their top candidates. So rank yes. choice voting or star voting, which is uh, happening in Oregon. Um, right. Uh, enforce the rules is the last little bit. So eliminating the lobbyist loopholes um, and strengthening the anti-corruption enforcement. Right. It's a lot to do. Right. Um, you were talking earlier about, you know, a message that you really wanted to get out today. Um, you oh. know, so yeah. yeah, feel free and, and go ahead and talk about that. 
Yeah, this campaign is nonpartisan, and that's one of the reasons um, that I chose it uh, because I think that I think that there's a lot of ways to affect change to a system above and beyond uh, supporting candidates, which is super important. But when I think about those candidates getting into office and being um, stuck in a super unhealthy system, I think that we diminish the likelihood that they can make the changes that they want to make. It, you know, it's it's kind of like you know, throwing them into a system where um, it's just not healthy. It's a, such an unhealthy ethics environment on a national state and often local level. And so um, so this is really, I liked that, you know, the first anti-corruption act was passed in Tallahassee, Florida, and it was done with Tea Party people and Democrats and liberal people, you know, the whole gamut. It was in a community that came together and I really like this campaign because I feel like it has the potential to bring people together over this issue and affect systemic change. I don't think party change is enough, most certainly. And so um, I want people to know that this is an option. And it's a change. it's amazing, amazing option here. I've learned a lot since joining up as well. So I am coalition coordinator for Mm -hmm. uh, the Vancouver chapter, and this is how I got introduced to it. It was Nicole that was coming back from the DNC, being outside um, protesting um, last year, and uh, she was from. You were thinking and thinking, what can you put your time to that would enact change? And this was it. Um, yeah. So she put out, "Who wants to help start up a chapter here?" and I was like, yes. And then I have learned immensely that we can really, we the people, can enact that change. Um, uh, going to our city councils ourselves, our county, yeah. and, and asking for them to get behind these changes that are needed. And there isn't there isn't a single issue uh, that we care about that isn't isn't affected by corruption and affected by these these you know really difficult unhealthy ethics environments. You care about environment. You care about healthcare for all. You care about you know name it, um, immigration, all of that, war, right? name an issue that is not fed by this issue. And so when I was on the plane, I was thinking, okay, I'm one woman, I'll be on a team, but I only have so much time, I only have so much energy. What am I gonna choose that's gonna make, that's gonna affect all the things I care about? And this is what I came up with. And thank you for doing that, because it's been so amazing to learn um, all, mm -hmm. all that's been going on. Uh, they've been stripping away these laws since the 1970s, little bit by little bit, that were in place to protect us. Mm -hmm. um, but as they've been pulled away, it's it's not about protecting us anymore. Right. So we got to get those back in into place. Um, so bringing it down to Washington state level. So we talked about kind of what it means nationally, mm -hmm. what we're working on. Um, yes. <laughs> so Washington's integrity grade uh, D plus. Uh, I, I'm not too proud of that. How about you? <laughs> right. So that's uh, the actual. It's they the way they phrase it. I'll look on my sheet so I get it right. Washington Corruption Risk Report Card. So it's reflecting not the amount of legal corruption, right? Because the definition of corruption right now is just basically a legal definition. That's very narrow and very difficult to prove and extremely difficult to prosecute, right? So nobody's really getting in trouble unless it's just blatantly egregious. So it's much, it's much more useful to look at corruption risk because what we're talking about corruption risk is what what's going on with the ethics environment that is not conducive to keeping a corruption free government. And so that's what the Washington uh, Corruption Risk Report card is. I threw up just a, a few of our worst scores here, some some F's, uh, some D minuses. Um, we saw one of them you know, about public access to information. We got an F executive uh, accountability. We got an F. Uh, judicial accountability uh, D minus, mm -hmm. being disclosure uh, D minus, uh, state civil service management a D minus, um, and legislative accountability a D. Right. So uh, we have a lot of work to do here in in Washington State. Mm -hmm. um, I know with uh, with their local group out and gone up and um, uh, to to Olympia and talked with um, some legislators up there. And we did get some to endorse the American Anti-Corruption Act. Um, and then uh, we also have one in um, on the Vancouver City Council that's kind of mm -hmm. championing it in our city. Right. So we've, we've got Sharon Wiley, 
Um, she's state rep of 49th district uh, and Monica Stonier from 49th as well. Paul Harris uh, from the 17th district and Noel Frame from the 36th. Um, we've got, you know, Democrats and a Republican in here, um, right? So. Yeah. Absolutely. We're trying yeah. to reach out to more and, and and have people realize it is it is not party particular. It's change right. we need. Well, I think that if people want to see change um, on those grades for the Washington Corruption Risk Report card, they have to understand that momentum has to be built. And you have to build momentum on a local level. Your representatives are not going to make the changes they need to make to get a better grade on such a thing without local communities contacting them and telling them what they want. Um, and we have to be specific. And that's why the American Anti-Corruption Act is so nice is because it's very specific. There's 14 provisions. There's, there's, there's you know, this needs to get done and this needs to get done and this needs to get done. And uh, so, you know, getting, getting those state endorsements are important. Um, but the way you get that true momentum going is you open a chapter or you work in a chapter and you work to get local resolutions passed. And it's those local anti-corruption resolutions, comprehensive ones, that build momentum and educate the public enough to even understand that this is such a core issue that all the other stuff they care about is being affected by it. Um, and, and so it's, it's really important to get involved with local chapters and to keep those local chapters going, that sort of thing. Totally agree. It, it's really um, helped the understanding uh, in, in my standpoint, for sure, on, on how we can enact these changes. Um, I really uh, appreciate you uh, coming on and speaking about this. We have a uh, event coming up, is head, headlining, heading up, um, Unrig the System Summit. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So this is going to be in New Orleans from February uh, 2nd to the 4th. And uh, we're looking to uh, go out there and represent for Washington State. Um, and hopefully we can get things set up to do some live streaming as well uh, and bring you guys uh, interviews from the floor. There's amazing uh, speakers going to be there. Um, so that's something to look out for. What's uh, something you would like to send off to everybody today if you can? Um, we do uh, have some questions, guys. Just to Oh, let you know. let's do that before we do a send off. Thank you, Brian, so much. No problem. We'll take questions for sure. So we have uh, Miss K Smith one two three four, and she is from Ireland. She is watching us right now from Ireland, which is amazing. Thank you Thank so you. much. Wow, that is so cool. And so she wants to know who sponsored and created this program. Oh, so I believe the it's Josh Silver is who uh, created Represent Us the campaign. Um, and I I want to say he did it in either the first anti-corruption act was passed in 2014, um, or was it 2012? I can't remember. Honestly, I can't remember when he started it, but, um, it's kept up with a lot of contrib uh, contributions from individuals and some different philanthrop philanthropic organizations. Um, and if you, if you info at represent.us, they'll give you a nice comprehensive list of donors because we're all about transparency. Any other questions or did that answer your question? Yes. She said, thank you. Thank you so much. And then, uh, is that associated with, uh, Cynthia McKinney's group? And that's from metalhead. I'm not sure whose group that is. So I oh. don't know. No problem. Yeah. It doesn't ring a bell. So I'm not so sure. Probably about not that. then. I have a question. Oh yes, John. I, don't, I think I'm, yeah, I'm online. Uh, so this is, I love your group. This is awesome. And I didn't realize you were involved with the, the Unrig the System. There's a lot of groups involved with that. It seems to be a, a rather a, a large progressive movement. Uh, are you guys, uh, so you have endorsements from candidates. Are you, are you, is your organization supporting candidates or, or working with individual candidates right. in that way? So we are a nonpartisan campaign um, and we do not endorse candidates. Candidates endorse us, basically. Uh, saying that they will support and fight for um, the provisions in the Anti-Corruption Act once they're elected. So we go to people in primaries and and, and they can endorse um, and we go to elected officials. But, you know, the proof is in the pudding. It's not that hard to sign a piece of paper and say that you endorse something. 
Um, and so it's really important. I mean, for me, I think that's, oh, that's great. I can, you know, make a meme now and say so-and-so endorses this, or I can say so-and-so doesn't endorse this. So true. But, you know, which is good for transparency. But when, when you know, push comes to shove and it's finally time to start passing uh, these different resolutions and some of them are um, actual acts on a, on a, on a national level, state and national level, that's when we're really going to see whether these candidates are willing to fight for us. Agreed. Mm-hmm. It's all in, it's all in the walk, not the talk. So mm-hmm. thank you. Well, thank you guys very much. If there's nothing further, um, we'll go ahead and, um, uh, let you say, you know, your goodbyes and any pertinent information you'd like to make sure that we pass on Nicole. Um, and then, uh, thank you, uh, again, so very much for taking your time and coming on the show today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Is there a Nothing is there a better. website you could send uh, just oh, everybody a website? Oh, goodness, yeah, sorry, to to. sorry, um, it's all in the links. But yes, I'm sorry. Uh, so represent dot us www.represent.us um, is where you go to find your chapter or to start your chapter. It is not that hard to start a chapter. I could do it. Um, anybody can. And so uh, start a chapter if there is not one in your area. Find your friends and pull it together. You get tons of support from headquarters. Uh, the American Anti-Corruption Act is at anticorruptionact.org, all one word. That's also very important. And then if you can, uh, do go to the Unrig the System Summit. There's over 100 speakers from both sides of the aisle. Get out of your bubble, right, and hear about all the different systemic changes that need to happen without the partisan flavor that's often thrown in that's unnecessary. I think that's awesome. Right. Thank you so much for what you're doing. And I, I see this last slide here. Is this Are these some of the things that your organization does specifically? Connect with communities, uh, knock on doors, phone bank? Is that, is that uh, direct we do. actions? Yeah. Uh, so, for example, we phone banked and um, the opportunity to canvas has come up. for. We had a state initiative actually in Washington that didn't pass, was it one or two years ago? When we very first, or probably one year ago when we first started, 1464. Um, right when we started. And so, yeah, we do those things. Uh, we also do a lot of education events. Uh, we do a lot of name gathering. People who sign, write their name and say that they support the American Anti-Corruption Act within the community, because when we take those numbers to our city council and say, look, we want you to do this, we can say, look, we have 1,600 people just in this city alone that, that want this. So it, it kind of ups our, gives us a little bit more power. So those are important activities that we do. And when we do that, we also get to um, we also get to educate people about this issue. Um, and people really don't believe that that they can use, that that there's an option. They kind of believe the system is the system. They don't understand that we have an initiative process um, in many many states that can build momentum and uh, make it so that we can make these changes. We don't have to wait and hope that a candidate will do it for us or keep a campaign promise. We are not powerless. And so so a lot of our conversations are convincing people that there's options and there's a possibility and that it's worth fighting for. I really appreciate you saying that because that's so true. We're learning that it, it just takes a lot of hard work and you can get laws changed. So thank you so much for what you guys are doing. Really appreciate it. Great. Thanks. Great. Peace. Yeah. Thank you, Nicole, so much. Yeah, thank you.